What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Hyundai Tucson, courtesy of Jack G. and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because I'm just gonna tell you off the bat, this is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation. So in terms of safety, it doesn't get any better than the Tucson. There is a ton of space in this thing. It comes with America's best warranty, being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well. So that's gonna save you some money there. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2023 Tucson. First one being the SE, starting at $26,450. SEL, which is the one we are in today, starting at $28,050. XRT for $33,275. End line for 33325 and lastly the limited starting at $35,710. That was all pricing though for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, you can do that. Simply add $1,500 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Tucson is actually going to be the same. So powering the beast is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 187 horsepower at 6,100 RPM, 178 pounds feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters for the limited trim level only. So we don't have them today, but I did want to mention it. Zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 7.1 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 33 highway for the front wheel drive, 24 in the city, 29 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our Tucson, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There is actually a drive mode toggle switch located directly behind the shifter. It will include normal, sport, smart, and snow, essentially adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and put it in sport driving mode. Let's find a straightaway here and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Hyundai Tucson here up to speed. All right, smidge bit of a rolling start, but let's do it here. Or it's loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just got done driving the uh, G70, so it's it's nothing compared to that, obviously, but shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway. Quite honestly, zero to 60 and 7.1, it didn't feel like that. It did feel a little bit slower, so not the quickest thing in the world, like I said, but again, you shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at a respectable 124 feet. Quite honestly, that's pretty much par for the course. I've seen SUVs come in as high as 139 feet, but 124 is pretty much average. So there's nothing wrong with that. That braking feel is eh, it's actually kind of on the firmer side of things which I don't mind so a lot of times with SUVs it's kind of on the looser side so again pretty much on par for the cores there the touching on suspension and handling independent McPherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension gas pressurized shock absorbers of course as far as ride quality goes that's probably the first thing I kind of muttered to myself when I first started driving this one is this thing is a pretty darn smooth ride for what it is so I expected to feel a little bit more of the road but quite honestly the uh, Tucson kind of surprised me. So very smooth ride for this thing, not having an adaptive suspension or an air suspension like you find in luxury vehicles, of course. But as far as steering feel goes, it tends to lean a little bit on the heavier side of things. It is a heavier steering feel than my Hyundai Sonata I drive on a daily basis. So I do actually kind of like that. As far as cabin noise goes, I am going 50 miles per hour right now. You guys can probably tell there is a little bit of engine noise, but other than that, there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind or road noise. So like I said, when I hit the gas originally, you do hear the engine a little bit, but everything else is pretty much on point. So no issues there. And that may be due in part because there is an acoustic laminated front windshield coming standard for all trim levels across the board. You don't always get that on all other manufacturers out there. So I do want to emphasize that. Touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfect perfectly fine out my rear view mirror. So definitely not gonna have any issues there. And if you wanted rain sensing windshield wipers, you can get them. They do come standard on the limited trim level. Essentially what that is, is when you're 
driving down the road and the Tucson detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on the windshield wipers for you. So it's kind of like automatic headlights. Definitely a very convenient kind of little feature there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Hyundai Tucson. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2023 Hyundai Tucson finished in intense blue is the name of our exterior color in case you were curious. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front on the front grille here. There is a large dark front grille that will come standard, but my very favorite part, integrated or incorporated LED daytime running lights. So to the sides there of the front grille, they're actually daytime running lights. So I absolutely love that. It's like nothing else on the road right now. And it really gives the Tucson a distinct or unique look, comparatively speaking, to all other SUVs out there right now. So huge fan of that. In case you were curious, where's the headlights? They're actually just below those LED daytime running lights. So the headlights are going to be down below here. It's actually front air curtains then to the side. But headlights, again, down below, they're actually LED headlights that come standard across the board as well. So no halogens on this thing. Wonderful there. So added illumination at night. Automatic feature coming standard on the Tucson as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Automatic high beams though, also coming standard. That isn't always the case on other manufacturers out there. So when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bump it back up to high beams. And as far as that Hyundai emblem up front, I did wanna mention this, it's either going to be finished in chrome like you're currently looking at, of course, or a dark finish to kind of tie in with that front grille. So two different options available there, but that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Tucson. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so we're now making our way to the side of this one. Roof rails will actually come standard on all trim levels across the board. Now, if you're looking at those crossbars up there, they are not standard. They are an accessory available by the manufacturer that Jack and Volvo added onto this one. So I do want to emphasize that, but they look pretty darn good up there. I will say that upper silver window trim that kind of ties into the floating roof line at the C pillar there. So definitely a very unique look to the Tucson there as well rear privacy glass of course coming standard but one of the things i really like about the tucson it kind of reminds me of the elantra a little bit is the z-shaped crease on the side of this thing so you guys can kind of see the front and rear doors have that z-shaped crease and uh definitely gives it a more sportier look in my personal opinion and again the elantra has the same thing so it kind of ties together pretty darn well with the elantra there then take a look at the side mirrors though body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come standard they are also heated with led the integrated turd signals that is pretty cool there as well taking a look at the wheel setup 17 inch alloys coming with the se and sel trim levels however i will say there are some optional wheel setups for the sel like we have today but 19 inch alloys essentially coming on all the other trim levels including the n line the xrt and the limited each with their own unique design so they are going to differentiate themselves dependent upon the trim level so Overall, very good looking side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Tucson. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, looking all the way to the top there, you will find a gloss black shark fin antenna, regardless of which exterior color that you go with on the Tucson. So that is pretty cool. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, of course, as typical SUV fashion there. Rear window wiper, where's the rear window wiper, you might ask, let me show you guys. It's actually tucked underneath that rear spoiler there. So it's gonna kind of assist with rear visibility there because it is tucked away and I know the Suburban does that the Tahoe does that so I actually personally like that because again the alternative is the rear window wiper asphyxiated to the rear glass and that does impede visibility slightly but speaking of the rear glass Hyundai logo is not actually on the vehicle but it's incorporated into that rear glass so I did want to mention that it's a little bit different than most other manufacturers out there so that's kind of a unique design element there of course you do have the LED taillights that's going to come standard on the SEL trim level and up if you wanted them. One of my favorite parts, I remember mentioning this last year, the diamond pattern indentations found on the rear bumper there, and it's kind of a 3D effect. So it's not a smooth effect, but rather 3D. So I did kind of like that. And of course there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> So but now since we are around to the back of the Tucson, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, I will say it is a hands-free 
power tailgate for the end line trim level and up. However, again, there is an available package for the SEL that we have today that you can actually get that as well. And there's actually a button on the tailgate itself, kind of towards the bottom there. There's actually a button on the key fob and there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes at a pretty darn impressive 38.7 cubic feet behind that second row. For comparison's sake, that actually the Hyundai Santa Fe comes in a little less than that, 72.1 cubic feet. Honda CRV a little bit more at 75.8 cubic feet and the Toyota RAV4 substantially less at 69.8 cubic feet. So in terms of cargo space only behind the Honda CRV so a decent amount of space back there and of course there are some levers to fold down those rear seats in the back so quite a bit of extra cargo space then if you needed it. You can find grocery bag hooks back there. There is cargo lighting. There is a 12 volt power outlet. There are tie down anchors. There's a cargo cover available and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor there's a little little bit of in-floor storage but mostly it's just the spare tire under there which I personally prefer as opposed to the fix a flat so pretty much everything you could possibly want back there but then making our way to the rear leg room that is going to come in at 41.3 inches so for reference I mean even six feet tall plenty of space for me back there again for comparison's sake Hyundai Santa Fe actually a little bit more at 41.7 inches Honda CRV at 40.4 inches so more than that Toyota RAV4 37.8 inches so also of course more than that so decent amount of space for the rear leg room but one of my favorite parts about the rear seats there there's actually a little place to hide the seat belt if it were to get in your way so I thought that was pretty cool you can of course recline those rear seats as well you don't always get that in SUV so I wanted to mention that there's a rear center armrest with cup holders of course there are some vertical rear ventilation a lot of times you'll find horizontal not a big deal of course but kind of interesting design element there as well well, there is dual rear USB charging ports that come standard heated rear seats. You can actually get that on the limited. It actually comes standard on the limited. I should put it that way. Front seat back map pockets, of course, coming standard and LED interior lighting. I did want to mention it because we have a package that gives us that today. So I always like LED interior lighting and that's available for the rear passengers there as well. But then making our way up to the front seats, cloth seating coming with the SE, SEL and XRT trims. There is a leather cloth combination for the end line leather seating then coming with the limited trim level. And again, a lot of this stuff is optional on the SEL that we have today. Eight-way power driver seat on the SEL trim level and up. That comes with power lumbar and heated front seats then as well. Limited trim is going to give you ventilated front seats, but also memory settings. So if you wanted those two, go with the limited trim. But overall, in our particular configuration we have today, plenty comfortable. Can definitely see myself taking a long road trip in the uh, Tucson for sure. So plenty comfortable seating here. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and heliscoping. It is leather wrapped for the N-line trim level and up and it is available for the SEO with a convenience package which by the way is what we have today in case I didn't mention it already so heated steering wheel then coming with the limited so definitely like the design of the steering wheel though there is some black plastic I probably would have swapped out for something else kind of towards the upper portion here. But anyways, to make our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear tailgate there, and there's actually a remote start. That's going to be the hold button that is available to you. There's keyless entry with a push button start for the SEL trim level and up, and if you wanted smart pack where you can essentially pull yourself in and out of a parking spot go with the limited trim level but in this case i'm just going to put my phone on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the infotainment screen and so one of my favorite parts upon startup there is a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster for the end line trim level and up and again optional on the seo with the convenience package therefore that is what you guys are looking at right now i love it because when you change driving mode specifically from like sport to normal or something like that it completely changes is the look of the gauges so with the sport driving mode you kind of have this carbon fiber look with some red hues and then you put it in any other driving mode essentially you go back to that white and silver look which is really good looking as well honestly but there are some steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel you can use to kind of toggle between everything so outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty tire pressure information when you need your next oil change or safety information pretty much everything you could possibly want because it is a digital gauge cluster so it is completely customizable so gotta love it but overall interior quality touching on that a little bit there is a panoramic sunroof for the limited trim level with the convenience package that we have today you can get a power sunroof which is what you guys are looking at of course alloy foot pedals coming with the end line alloy door sills coming with the end line as well and of course in case you haven't noticed it already the end line is the kind of sportier trim level in case you were curious about that 
Automatic climate control coming standard, dual zone climate control coming with the N line trim level and up. It is optional for the SEL. And again, we have that package option. Wireless phone charger for the N line trim level and up, optional on the SEL. Home link controls. And line trim level and up, optional on the SEL yet again. Overall, interior quality is pretty darn good. It's actually not that bad. I like this little kind of soft cloth feel just above the passenger side glove box. And I like how they kind of incorporated the air vents kind of into the design of everything. It ties together with the doors just above the passenger side glove box, above the infotainment screen. So it's kind of just surrounding you. So I like this silver design that they have there as well. Just in front of the shifter, you have two USB charging ports, a 12 volt power outlet, and of course your wireless phone charger if you get that to the right of the shifter you have dual cup holders and of course a gloss black finish which is very easy to clean i have that in my sonata actually then just behind it all you will find a decent amount of storage within a center armrest as well as your uh, heated seat buttons just in front of that too so like i said overall tier quality is actually plenty fine for me so no complaints here then making our way to the infotainment screen and this is going to differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with and so there's an eight inch color touchscreen display that comes standard on all trim levels but the limited so if you were to go with that limited you will get a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display but here's the thing bluetooth and audio streaming either way android auto apple carplay either way but if you go with the eight inch screen as opposed to the 10 and a quarter inch you're actually going to get wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. For whatever reason, you don't get it on the more expensive higher end screen, but you get it on the eight inch screen. So I'm almost tempted to go with the eight inch screen kind of thing because you get the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Factory navigation system though, coming with a limited only voice memo system, which essentially allows you to record your voice and then play it back at a later date. So that is pretty cool. You also have quiet mode up there. So essentially it cancels out the rear speakers, limits the front speakers. So if the kids are sleeping in the back you're less inclined to wake them up that is pretty cool you can check out your climate control settings up there of course as well and your radio information so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them there are a six speaker sound system for the se sel and xrt and then you got an eight speaker bose sound system for the limited and the n-line trim level so that is not the one we have today. We do have the six speaker sound system. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the six speaker sound system that we have with us here today. Actually a lot better than I expected, honestly. I think I've tested the Bose sound system in the Tucson before. Maybe it was last year, but six speakers, it, it kind of sounds like six speakers, but it sounds a bit better than most six speaker sound systems that I test out. There was a decent amount of bass there actually. So I actually don't mind the six speaker sound system. That could probably get by with me. So I don't mind it. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the two sign in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, pretty high definition as well. And if you were to go with the limited, you will also get a surround view monitor giving you that bird's eye view as well but as always that is going to lead us into safety and so let me first start with the best part iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest designation given by iihs as i alluded to at the beginning of the video there front side side curtain airbags of course in the back you got latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but the fun stuff coming standard on the tucson will be forward collision warning with pedestrian detection automatic emergency braking lane departure warning lane keep assist driver attention monitoring system and rear occupant alert then as well then if you were to go with the sel trim level and up you were going to add in addition to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and adaptive cruise control with stop and go which is a brilliant system with any hyundai or genesis because it does actually keep you kind of centered in the lane as opposed to most other manufacturers that i test out so i will say that so overall when it comes to my final thoughts of the tucson i like the unique styling specifically the led incorporated lights into the front grill i think that's brilliant great safety of course as i just mentioned digital gauges are absolutely wonderful as well this is a lot of stuff you can't find on other manufacturers like you can't get digital gauges on the RAV4 or the CRV, for example, and this unique styling, like I mentioned up front. So that is pretty cool. So as room for improvement goes, I wouldn't have minded seeing multicolor ambient lighting. I think that would do pretty good in here. And Hyundai and Genesis does that on a lot of their other vehicles. Also for the Tucson specifically rear window sunshades, I think would be pretty cool in the Tucson, at least on the limited trim level. So Hyundai maybe consider that for the future. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Tucson in the comments section below. And 
that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. I like to love you night and day if I may. may.